It will be perilous times, Moses said. Or, or it will be through actually throughout the scripture up to the, 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 the New Testament. But what is that, what was that description of the people of the end times? What did it say? Men shall be lovers of self. Does that sound familiar? There is more self-love in our culture than there has ever been in the history of the world. I don't just mean American. I mean modern culture. Self-love. Self-realization. Self-actualization. Self-obsession. Self-magazine. Self-culture. Self-preoccupation. Even the end time celebration of, of same-sex relations. That's self. That's same, same. In the church, the gospel has become, in many churches, is largely, uh, largely for the self. God is your counselor. God is your personal, personal agent. He's going to help you. He's your personal trainer, and he's going to help you be more successful. That's not the gospel. God will bless you as you follow him, as he chooses to bless you. But it becomes a thing where are you serving God or is God serving you? You're seeking to be served by God. That is not what, what Jesus said. That's not what he said. He who serves himself. No, I've come to serve others. But it ends up, ultimately, it's about self, self. What God wants for you and God wants for you. And God. God will bless you, but put him first. Don't put yourself first. If you're, put, if you're just getting more, if that's all you're doing, you're getting more selfish in the name of God. That's not what God said. He said, give up, be selfless, love, and God will bless you. And even the church becoming, it says, what, is it, what else does it say here? Men will be lovers of money. Become more materialistic, more money-oriented. I was with an old-time minister uh, the other day, and he was speaking about how, you know, when they, he said in the past, I could, people just volunteered, volunteered, volunteered for the Lord's work, and he says, now people want to be paid for everything. And that, that is a shift. People want, what do I get out of what? Instead of just serving the Lord, God will bless you. He says, they want the reward now, they don't want it later. Men will be boastful, arrogant, culture of, of, of arrogance, Malicious gossip, culture, a vulgar, it's describing a vulgar culture, a harsh culture. How many people realize that, I don't, I don't depending on where you grew up, that we are in a, a vulgar culture, a culture that is vulgar, that's harsh, that's not gentle, that, that, is, that, is, that is destructive, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Does that sound familiar? We're in it. And all those things are more so now than have ever been since the gospel came to Western civilization. It says, there shall be a great falling away when you know before the Lord comes. Today, the New York Times and ABC News and others will refuse to even write the name of God with a capital G. They will not even give him the dignity of a first name. They'll treat him as if he was a pagan deity. Recently, it came out, the top, they had a study of the top 10 books in schools that Americans viewed as most dangerous. One of the top 10 was the Bible. Can you imagine that in a school system that was founded by the Puritans for the, for the purpose of spreading the gospel? Imagine if the Puritans returned today to America to see what happened. They would be shocked. Every year in the last seven years, the numbers of those in America who identify as Christian at all, not saying, not saying born-again Christian, not saying evangelical Christian, not saying true Christian, but Christian has dropped by one percentage point every single year. Thus, in seven years, 7% 7 less. Now, that, that may, I don't know how it seems to you, but that, may, that has to be, you were talking about 2,000 years. That has to be the greatest cha mass change. We're witnessing the greatest mass change of morality in the history of the world. There's never been a change of morality this fast globally, ever. It's like the undoing of the gospel when it came to, to this civilization. Among millennials, it's heading to almost half saying they're not Christian at all. That, and that's, that's the future. How many millennials are evangelical? 19%, 81% no. One poll sought to find out how many of the younger generation have a biblical worldview. The answer, 1%. Another translation of in Timothy, it says, they will with, with, they will, in the last days they will be without natural affection. Without natural affection. Interesting. Well, they'll be with, they'll, they will therefore be with unnatural affection. There, there's something about this, that there's something about the end times 
that's linked to unnatural. The word, when Paul says there'll be a great falling away, the word is apostasy. And apostasy comes from the Greek apostasia. And that is taken to mean, and it does mean, it means to, to, to move away from, fall away from your stand. Fall away from faith is what it's saying here. But it means fall away from the stand of. But it also means to fall away from the state of, or the state of being. So in other words, in the same day when you see, you see a culture, a civilization falling away from faith, from the faith, from the word of God, you will also see Man falling away from the state of man. Women falling away from the state of women. Marriage falling away from the state of marriage. Get it? A falling away from being. In Daniel, when he looks, when he looks at the last global kingdom or the last great kingdom, that, that fourth creature, that fourth beast in Daniel, the word that's used to describe, first of all, it's a weird looking thing. It's the only one that has metal in it. It's like unnatural. It's artificial. But the word, when it's described in Daniel, it says this, this creature was shane in Hebrew, which means can mean it was different, it was diverse, or it was altered. In other words, the end time civilization will be different from everything before it. The first creatures are all animal forms, but this one is beyond. And so it's saying the end time civilization, last day civilization will be Unnatural, there'll be an unnaturalness, a dehumanness about it. We're watching that. So it's weird to watch people, you know, if I go, when I go to airports now, I just kind of, every single person is plugged into something electronic. Unless they're like very old, there's almost everybody is plugged into electronic something, you know. Everybody. It's amazing. And, it, and yeah, we know we're using it, you're using it, but you got to be, we got to be careful where this is all going. We're using it, or are we getting so plugged in that we stop relating? You know, the younger generation, in many ways, they, they're, they've done studies. They don't relate as much to others. They relate through there, through that. So I'm looking and saying, wow, and I'm writing it, I'm typing this up and writing it down on my laptop as I do that. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts, or get in touch, go to hopeoftheworld.org or call toll-free 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821. You can also get more at Jonathan Kahn's Facebook page or write us direct at Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey 07644, USA.